Welcome everybody, this is Turkish Films Chess Channel, Daily Chess, Episode 5. I've tried to film this video more times than I'd like to admit. This is Daily Chess Episode 5, and we're going to be playing Blitz Chess. 10 minute chess. Here we go. We got a game against XK Factor 31. Uh, yeah, this video has been kind of hard to make a lot of everything from connection errors, uh, to noise, to low quality games from both my opponent's side and my own side. Um, the first game was the Sicilian that I tried to film, but he just blundered really early on, and so it didn't it didn't go well. <laughs> okay, so we have a Smith Mora Gambit. Some people play like this, gambiting a third pawn. And I don't know if I'm supposed to accept it or not. I think it's dubious, so I probably should accept. Um but yeah, I've never played against it. Um, the standard line is he takes right here. There we go. And I take, I go here with the knight. Now we can go for like a kind of dubious Siberian setup like this, which is normally somewhat what I go for. Um, we'll try to be a little bit smarter. Um, this move comes in and this move comes in. And our pieces go to uh, fairly natural squares. The bishop goes here. This one can come back if it needs to. This is a weird move order. Um, Okay. Yeah, I feel fine playing e6 here. Um, bishop there with the pin looks just fine. I don't know why. Huh. Okay, we'll see how this goes. So one of the main issues in the smith Moore Gambit that I've seen is that the black king, if you're not careful, doesn't really get out of the center very quickly. Uh, and that can be a problem for lots of reasons, one of which your king becomes quite unsafe. Also, this, this e-pawn becomes kind of a hassle to deal with. He hasn't moved his bishop yet. Uh, we'll bring our knight out. Okay. So I want to play queen c7. And uh, that's what I've seen before in Smith Mora's, but normally they bring out their bishop, uh, like in the game Mark of Excellence, that's what I've seen. Okay, h6. If he takes the take, if he doesn't, I play bishop here. Okay, so there's bound to be some imbalances in the position. But so far, it's very symmetric. Very symmetric. Okay, I think he sh maybe he's going to do this. And castle this way. And then play this move to try to restrict me. So my counter is going to be something like this. So I can get my bishop out quickly. And he stops that move right away. Very good. Um... So this problem, this pawn's a little bit out there right now. I noticed that. He has three attackers on that square. Knight here is met by what? His other knight moves? Uh, he offered a draw. Uh, no thanks. Hmm. I can't take this because then rook takes. And if here, knight there. If he doesn't want to trade. If he wants to trade, that's excellent for me. Is the knight very good there? That's what I'm wondering. Okay, let's just develop our pieces. Mm hmm. Oh, he said he has to go. Okay. Well, then this is a bonus game. He has he has to leave. So this is this is just gonna be a drawn game. This doesn't count for anything. We'll go to the next one. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure of all of the intricacies of the Smith Moore, but here we go. Next game. Bonus game. 
playing against a 1629 from Argentina. And we have a Queen's Pawn opening. Queen's Gambits, and we're entering the Slav. Okay, and he's playing the modern line. Bring our other knight out. And I think just e3 is fine. I think just e3 is okay. I don't want to get over ambitious and then wish my bishop was back. So I'm tempted to play b3. I want to wait as long as possible before moving this bishop. Otherwise, he'll take and I'll lose the tempo. I think my bishop wants to be on this diagonal anyway, so. Okay. develop our bishop and now this guy can develop wherever he'd like um, because I'll take back with the pawn wonderful so everything's pointing at his king I'm wondering if here actually we can play an h4 h5 and try to get at his king let's see the center is fine for now if h4, he can always play h5, but that's weakening, and I have this square. If I play h5, he just takes with the rook, or takes with the knight, I mean. So maybe a queen c2 is more in line with the needs of the position. I'll just delay castling for one more move. I think my queen's good here anyway. Um, I'm actually preparing to play e4. So now if e4, can he play e5? e4, e5. If I take it, he takes with the knight. I take with the knight. He takes with the rook. I don't have to take. So my king should go out of the center. Now, does my king go out of the center queenside or kingside? I'm really intrigued by going queenside. Um, he just doesn't have anything against my queenside. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for this. I'll go for this. Uh, I don't have like a ton of calculation. I just know that these pawns just really are are really wanting to attack this structure. Um, and after a king b1, I have e4 and e5. Like I said, it's not going to be too much of a hassle, honestly, to play this way. Just got to be a little careful. Just got to be a little careful. Mm. Take with the bishop. I'm seeing b5, b4. My knight has to move. Okay, I'm still not going to be too concerned. My bishop's going to come back to a square it wants to go to. Um, are we trying to play knight here? Okay, well, we shouldn't allow that. Let's take with the knight. He's going to open up the C file. The bishop will come back like this. My king will scoot over. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't see any problems here. I have this square really d super defended. My king's going to go to b1. I'll play h4, I'll play h5. He's trying to get his bishop out so that he can put his rook on the c-file to attack me. I know that, so I'm going to move. I don't have to play e4. I don't have to play e4. But if he tries to do this kind of thing, I think I could just do this. So let's go h4. His knight's kind of cut out, uh, a little bit out of the game. A little, little, little lost there. One issue with this is that his knight... Yeah, we go here. Let me just double check that. Does my queen have anything to do here? No. I don't see a better square. That's the only other square I can go to. I don't see how useful it is. Yeah, so he's trying to exploit this square here. Now he's defending his king side as well, which is you know good for him. That's what you're supposed to do. So what if I play knight e5 and then push anyway? Er, no, I think it's a more direct plan. We just get more firepower and we play g4 and force through h5. No reason to sack the exchange. My knight does belong on e5, though. I really should put it there at some point. Yeah. This just doesn't really demonstrate that he understands the needs of the position. So he's trying to play his knight on c3 and take my dark bishop, which I understand. Um, I 
Do I allow that? Or do I take? Takes, takes. My knight can go here if it wants, then to here, and then comes back. That's kind of sad. I think I should take, though. Because knight there looks a little bit unpleasant. After I take and the rook takes. This is an attacking piece. This is supposed to be a defensive piece. He'll have a structure that I'm not, I'm not super fond of. Uh... So I don't. I think I'll just let the check happen. Um, just continue on with my plan. G four. I don't think he has a very strong threat. And H five next. Is H five better, or is it better to go G five H five? Because if H five and he pushes here, I feel like my attack is sort of stopped for the moment. Hmm. Hmm. I'd like to get rid of this knight. So I think my knight goes to e5, and then f3 can be played. This bishop isn't really doing a whole lot right now. I mean, there's there's like stuff in the way. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So does my knight go to e5? That's the question I'm asking myself right now. My knight goes to e5 for the purposes of A, releasing the f pawn. Uh, B, it's attacking this weakness in his camp. It honestly doesn't do a whole lot that move if I go through with the attack and he pushes here he's closing up that side of the board it's gonna be kind of hard to force through an attack takes here takes back knight here H5 is the plan. H5 is the plan. I'm wondering if knight e5 is better or knight d2 is better. I think maybe knight d2 is better because it challenges this knight immediately. And I think I'd take with the bishop. Maybe I should take some time out of the attack, because now that this, this has kind of settled down. Okay. I, I can't say that I understand that. Um, so if I take, he's going to take back. That's just opening lines to his king, right? Yeah, we're opening lines to his king. And then I'm very happy to take here and put my knight on e5. Hurt the pawn structure. Yeah. Does, isn't this just so good for me? Like, queen there's a really good move, right? Hitting both these pawns. Um, queen here, queen there would defend. Also, bishop there would defend. Those both look like good resources. 
I play this move here? Oh, do we have, oh, I want to sacrifice. I definitely want to sacrifice something because his kingside structure is just so weak, right? So I want to, how do I get these pawns? If I go here, he's got to move the rook and he'll blockade this square. So I'll play this. This move here. Here. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And I'll take this rook at the end. I'll take the rook. Yeah, no more infiltration. Defend this. And then we'll just scoot over. can't take that because the other pawn's hanging. Yeah, now he tries to defend it. Hmm. Can try to pick up the bishop. Queen to b8 check would win the bishop. So bishop d5 expected. I'm not up any material, but I should have a really nice attack. Also, that would be check if the king ever moves. Also, I just got to play way faster. So there's the check that I'm trying to play. Uh, he didn't refute it. Also, how does that not just not give away material? It does. <laughs> okay. So my opponent just at the end just blundered. So most of the games that I've been trying to record, this is my, like my fourth or fifth uh, take, have ended like this. My opponent just drops material or misses a tactic or something like that. Um, so it's not going to be you know, so interesting. But there were some interesting parts to this game. Uh, anyway, that has been uh, me, Turkish Films, your host, today for Daily Chess, episode four. And really, I mean, what, we can, what can we take from this game, right? I, I'd say mainly it's to stay Turkish. That's the main thing. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day.